All right, I'm going to throw a little different style video at you guys today. I get asked a lot about what software I use, and that's what we're going to go over in this video. So real quick, I'm not sponsored or affiliated with any software that I'm going to go over. I uh, just happen to use all of them. And I'm a software guy, as I think I've told you before, so I really dig deep into all this stuff. But anyway, here we go. Uh, first off, I'll go over the types of telemetry software that I use. I'm not going to do a deep dive on, on these because I've pretty much done a deep dive on two of them already. Uh, but the first is Garage 61. If you want to see how I use that, you can look at my How Do I Qualify video, where I basically do a deep dive and, and use that extensively there. Uh, the second is Motec. And if you want to see how I use that, you can look at the How Do I Practice video. Uh, the third, which is kind of a mix between the two, is VRS, or Virtual Racing School. And uh, I haven't done a deep dive on it, so I'm going to hop on over there real quick, and we can um, take a look. Let me log in real quick. Yeah. Blur out my email there, but okay, so when you when you log in here, uh, you're going to see uh, just your standard homepage. So I think of VRS as kind of a mix between Garage 61 and Motec. It has the same type of stuff as Garage 61 on the free side. However, if you pay for a subscription, and, and I have, they also have data packs where they have um, videos showing you how to drive the track. They have telemetry analysis that goes beyond what uh, Garage 61 can do, and, and it's a lot like MoTeC. And uh, you also get setups for the Open Series as well. So uh, just to illustrate that, we'll go into Data Packs. We'll just go into like a fixed here. So you can see all the times and all that. We'll say we're, we're going to look at Martinsville. So click here. There's a full video tutorial on how to run it. Uh, you can look at their telemetry as well, or you can go and look at their individual laps. So we'll just go down and look at this in single lap mode. You get a video with it. That's really loud. Uh, you get a video with it. Go that or uh, just go here. And so this should look a lot like Garage 61, right? And so you get a, a lot of the same stuff. But if you uh, pay, then you can also click here for the uh, advanced telemetry mode. And you're only going to get this uh, with, I believe, their $10 a month subscription, not the $5. With $5, you would still get the um, data pack and, and the videos, but you wouldn't get the advanced telemetry like Motec is. So... If we click on the advanced telemetry, you get basically all the stuff you're going to need. MoTeC is more powerful and is also um, more configurable. But if you don't want to go down the rabbit hole of MoTeC or you're like me and you want to look at this stuff when you're not sitting at your rig as well, uh, then this might be for you. So you've got your balance here. Uh, you've got your tires with your temperatures. And temperature change, you've got your ride heights, uh, your dampers or your shocks. So you've got all this stuff that you can uh, really dive into, which is all stuff that Garage 61 doesn't give you, MoTeC does. Uh, and so that's why I kind of look at it as a uh, combination of the two. Um, however, Garage 61 and MoTeC are both free. And so you are paying for this. But it's it's worth it if you don't want to go into all, all the other stuff. Uh, plus, you get the videos and the setups and, and stuff like that. And so uh, I use this a lot just to um, – I, I look at their videos. Their videos are great. And I also use this if I'm wanting to look at telemetry and I'm not at the rig, right? I've, I've got 15 minutes. I'm downstairs 
you know, with the wife and the kids, I've got my iPad out and I'm like, hey, you know, let me go and look at something real quick. And also, I use this to really quickly uh, get my fuel mileage for a race. So, like, I'll just go and look, just kind of look, all right, what's, you know, 0.13 lap times however much fuel I've got in the, in the tank, and it's going to give me. And it will tell you that right here, but I kind of do it myself because it's like, okay, well, what if I only went with 0.12 or, you know, I use a lot. And so uh, I'll get a lot of my fuel stuff like that from here. So anyway, that's a real quick overview of VRS. So next I get asked a lot is what spotter am I using? And I am using the JJ Cuspack, which you can find here. And all the links will be uh, in the description. But uh, I use the Jimmy Johnson Spotter Pack, specifically the Cus version. And so you can download it from Google Drive here. And you say, okay, well, what do I do with it then? You scroll down, and here's the install instructions. So there you go. That's the spotter that I use. Moving to the left monitor. What I have on my left monitor is Stent Analyzer. If you want to see how I use it, you can go to the How Do I Practice video. Uh, I go into it extensively, but uh, here it, it is. And so I don't use this during the race. Uh, this window I use extensively during practice, but I don't really pay that much attention to it after a race just because uh, you've got... Uh, you know, different strategies. You might be going for a short run or a long run, or there might be traffic or something along those lines that can really throw these off. So I don't really pay that much attention to it after a race, but uh, I use it a lot during practice. But what you are going to see is this on my left monitor. And so I use this during the race all the time. And so the main thing that I use this for is, is the green number here that laps this stent. And I will combine that with something that I'll show you in a minute to um, show you for pit strategy stuff, how I do that. But anyway, there is a lot of information here. So the two main things that I use uh, are the laps this stent and the wind calculation here. Uh, you've got the your number of incident points, how many cautions, caution laps. Last pitted, laps to limp. So you've got a lot of information here, but it's also a lot to look at during a race. And so the green pops out at me and this pops out at me. And so that's the two main things that I use this for. Uh, that is what you will see on my left monitor. So moving on to the uh, middle monitor. That is Race Labs. So that up. So here is the race lab thing we'll go to overlays uh, the main thing so on my bottom left you'll see the fuel calculator now um, race lab does have some free stuff uh, and then you have to pay for some of the other to get it to look like this you do have to pay uh, so just be aware of that but it has a fuel calculator that is 100 percent free it just doesn't have like uh, this stuff over here and the stuff at the bottom but anyway uh, that's what I have there for the fuel calculator. Uh, the horizontal standings that you guys see at the top, that is how I get that. And then also the relative box that you see in the bottom right. And now that I've started using on my screen as well. So that's where all that comes and you can configure all this and say, I don't want brake bias there. I want it up here and all that. Uh, a lot of the configurability is behind the paywall but you can at least get a relative that has most of the stuff there. So that is the middle monitor for you. The right monitor is sim racing apps. And uh, so the only thing that I have on there right now is brake vice, but it has a lot more stuff. As you can see, that's a big scroll wheel here. Um, if you want like a major thing like crew chief, you can bring it up and say, I want, you know, I'm coming into the pits. I want uh, fuel and four tires. You click that and it's going to do all of it for you. Uh, there's two different versions. So you have the crew chief and crew chief pit controller. This just shows you what it is. If you click on that button, it's not going to do anything. 
pit controller, if you click it, it will actually tell iRacing, hey, I, you know, make this change. So if you do the, if you use this version of it, if you can actually click on it, it's only going to give you fuel, fuel and lefts, right? So um, that's neat. Now, also, if you have a fourth monitor, great. You can put this on your fourth monitor and do it. You can scale it down. I wouldn't do that with the, the pit controller, but you can uh, scale it down and do that. You can also use an Android tablet and, or no, actually, yeah, an iPad as well, um, and have this on a tablet as well because what it's doing is it's running a server that's going to be on your local network, and so then you can connect to this server while you're on your local network, uh, just go into like a browser source. And uh, so, yeah, you can actually like have a tablet set up where you are uh, looking at this sort of data. And so, as you can see, there's all sorts of stuff that you can have with it. Uh, like I said, I have the brake bias on the right screen. During super speedways, I like to bring up uh, the fuel tank as well. Uh, so we'll just bring this one up so you can see. But uh, the reason that I have this, even though I have the fuel calculator in the bottom left, is uh, for super speedways, it's very important to know exactly when you can fuel and make it because it's a lot of times it's just a one lap difference, right? And so uh, I'll have this usually on the bottom right. Uh, monitor as well but uh, it's what it's going to do is I think it's blue and it'll be blue and then it'll just keep coming down as you're running out of fuel but as soon as you can make it the entire background is going to change into like a checkered flag and so that is a very quick visual it, it will pop out at you if, if you have it in your peripheral view as soon as that switches you're going to notice and be like okay if I pit right now I will have fuel to make it and a lot of times that can come up quick at super speedways. And so that's uh, what I really like. You can also do it with like the uh, pit controller where like if you click above it, it will uh, it will fuel to just that amount. So like it, say your line is right here. Uh, that's how much fuel you, you need to make it. And the checkered line will like go down as well. So like uh, if if you need this much fuel at this line, that's where the checkered line will be. And then you can just click above it where you're not taking a full tank but you're taking just enough above it and uh it'll work out well so uh i use that at super speedways i've used some of the other stuff in the past as well but as you can see i mean they they just have a, a metric plethora of uh things that you can uh you can use so there's the brake bias adjustment that i use but yeah there's there's tons of stuff and um, all that. There's also an audible thing. So like if you're going into pit road, if you ever heard like somebody's, uh, PC like beeping at them, that comes from this. Uh, I have that turned off, but you can have it beeping and the beeps are faster, the faster you're going. So like, as you slow down, they will get, uh, farther spaced apart to let you know if you're speeding or not. So that's another thing. If you've heard that or heard people talking about it, this is the app that that does that and uh, last but definitely not least on my fourth monitor up above i have uh jrt or joel real timing so uh here is an example uh, this is not mine i'll show you mine here in a second but it doesn't have any data in it right now but uh, anyway the the top is going to be the same so you've got the amount of fuel that you have how many laps you have left um how many laps are left in the race. I use that because I hate doing math and swapping the black box to see. So I just look at look at that real quick. Um, that's pretty much all I use from the top there. Um, then it will have the drivers. All this is configurable, right? And so well, I'll just show you mine real quick. So see, I've got, I've got that. And then I've got the driver, the relative, uh, the delta the gap, pit stop stuff, and then tire stint. So... We'll go back to here just to see. So for the driver, you'll see the relative, and that's relative to you, right? He's four seconds ahead of him. He's 19 seconds behind. The delta here, basically red means they're going faster than you. Green means you're going faster than them. It will break it up. So, like, imagine, I know this is on a road course, but imagine it, it was a uh, oval. So 
right here. This is a good one to look at. It's like they're going faster than you in turn one and uh, down the back stretch. But here you're making up time in three and four is kind of the way to read that. So when you're getting up to them, you know, hey, I'm better than them in three and four. That's probably where I need to make the pass or I'm losing time in one and two. I need to figure out what I'm doing. Realistically, during the race, you're not going to have time to analyze this that w that way. Uh, I use I use it to that level a lot when I'm spotting for somebody. But realistically, during the race, the way that I use this is at the end of a fuel run, if I'm trying to decide if I'm going to pit early or if I'm going to run it long, I'll look up here and I'll be like, all right, for the people ahead of me, are they red or are they green? It's just a real quick glance. Oh, they're red? Okay, well, that means I'm losing time, so I might as well pit early. If it's green, all right, well, I'm going to stay out, right? Because if, they're, if they haven't pit yet, I'm catching, so it's to my benefit to not take that risk and go ahead and stay out. So I'll use it right there. It's just a really quick glance and be like, okay, red or green. That's all I'm checking. I'm not going to the depths and saying like, oh, okay, man, it looks like exit of four is where I'm really getting them. You, you don't have time to do that. Uh, the other thing is for um, your, your pit right here. So uh, these are, are clearly road, but for the stop it tells you how long they were in their box a four tire change takes anywhere from 13 to 15 seconds so if you look at their their stop this is mainly under caution but uh if you look at their stop and it's anywhere from 13 to 15 seconds you know they took four tires if it's anywhere from eight to nine they took two and so it's really useful to look at the guys up ahead of you be like did anybody up here take two if they didn't even stop for eight or nine seconds. They just topped off on fuel and they're still on old tires. So that can be extremely useful information, especially if the guy is like right in front of you or, you know, if it's to the in the road to the inside and be like, okay, we're probably going to get a good jump here or something like that. And so, uh, so that's that. And then tire stint is, uh, it'll, it'll show, I, I hate they don't have it here, but, uh, anyway, it'll show like, Hey, they went 54 laps on this set of tires and 27 on this, and it'll continue to go up. So you can do a real quick glance up here to see, oh, okay, I've got three lap older tires than the guy that's coming up behind me or something like that. And so um, that's how I use it just real quickly during the race. Uh, but all that stuff's configurable. So anyway, uh, that is all the software that I use, everything that you'll see on the screen. And uh, things you won't, like JRT. But uh, that's pretty much it. So uh, if you have any questions about any of the software that I've gone over, uh, recommend anything else. Uh, I have used Crew Chief in the past. Uh, it was great. I used it for the, uh, the voice commands and really liked it. it. To me, it was more useful back before uh, iRacing added stuff like uh, Pitbox Countdown and stuff like that. And so once... Uh, iRacing started that. Uh, I, I stopped using it, and uh, there was a couple other spotter things I forget. But anyway, so I don't use Crew Chief anymore, but I, I could just as easily, you know, put it back and and be happy with it. Uh, I know there's another one, Digital Race Engineer or Dre. Uh, bet y'all thought I forgot about Dre, but um, I have not used it. But it does similar things to Crew Chief, so you can use that as well. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, so that is uh, all the software that I currently use right now. And so uh, if you have any questions about anything, uh, drop them in the comments. Let me know. Uh, any other really neat software that you know about that I don't, let me know. I love that kind of stuff. So anyway, that will uh, do it from here. Thanks for watching.